Well, praise the Lord. Good evening. During this, which has been called Holy Week, literally all over the world, we're coming to the end of that, Pastor Benny. Yes. And uh, we tonight are, are celebrant over the fact that Christ has risen from the dead. And we're going to talk much about that the relevance of the resurrection mm -hmm. and uh, the reality of the resurrection and the results of the resurrection. But there is, a, I think, a, an appropriate somberness that we need to acknowledge Always. as we think about Christ Jesus, the Son of God, mm. having died on the cross in our place for our sins. It, it, it overwhelming, you know. It's even it, it, it usurps the somberness. It's overwhelming to try to grasp that one man uh, would go to a cross just for me. You know it, how many times we've said, if you and I were the only people on planet Earth, yeah, he would have gone to the cross yeah. for us. And it it, it it is an overwhelming thought, uh, and it is somber. Uh, it's celebratory. But it's overwhelming for me. It, yeah. It just, it's hard to get a grasp of. Our scripture for this evening is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. And Pastor, I'll tell you what. Tonight, I'll read 1 and 2, and then you read two verses, etc., gotcha. etc. Let's do it. And verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preached to you unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. this ah. is the word of the Lord. Amen. Pastor, we're going to be talking tonight about the most important event in the history of humanity, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're blessed this evening to have with us in a musical way, eternal vision. And right now they're going to come around and sing, I owe it all to him. I'm just so thankful. I'm just so grateful for what Christ has done for us. The song's my personal testimony. I owe it all to him. Once I was lost. In my sin and confusion, and I cried out for someone to show me the way. Then Jesus found me, and all things around me were changed when I saw.
Eternal vision, they've blessed our hearts. You know, Keith, as we begin thinking this on, uh, on this day, Monday, Thursday, uh, many people will be celebrating Lord's Supper tonight in their churches and uh, in preparation for Good Friday. Yeah. And then, of course, Sunday is, is the paramount of, of the week when we think of Jesus rising from the dead. You know, to me, Easter has three dimensions in time, all right? In the past, Easter demonstrates to us the risen Lord, okay? In the present, Easter makes possible a relationship with our risen Lord. And then in the future, Easter touches each of us at our greatest need, the resurrection of the body on Mm. the last day. Hmm. I mean, so I see Easter yesterday, I see Easter today, and I see Easter tomorrow. Yeah. And that, that's how I prepare. And then my heart is warmed every time, every time we read these verses uh, that, that the Apostle Paul reminds us that he delivered to us and received, that Jesus died for our sins, and that he was buried and rose again. You know, Keith, I can't help but think, I can't help but think that sometimes we might want to major on the cross rather than the resurrection. And it's all about the resurrection. Everybody back then died on the cross who were considered criminals or slaves. Uh, There was one time, it it is said to me Hmm. that I have read that during Jesus' lifetime, his 33 years, over, Mm-hmm. 30,000 people died on crosses mm-hmm. during his lifetime. Mm-hmm. We don't need to focus on the cross. We need to focus on the resurrection. And uh, you're exactly right. However, this comes to my mind. The scripture plainly and simply says, as you and I were blessed of the Lord right. to be able to read together, that Christ, verse 3, yes. died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. How then did He die? He died on the cross. cross. What did Paul say? He said, but God forbid that I should glory 
except in the cross Cross. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. He said, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For the preaching of the cross is our mandate. It's our, it's our marching orders. And you, you're exactly right. Thousands died on the cross, but never was there a sinless man no. to die on a criminal's cross. And not only that, as far as I can tell, Jesus was the only, I think I can say that safely, yeah. was the only person who died on a cross who didn't have any bones broken. Always... The, the leg was broken or some bone of the body was broken by those who were on a cross. Yeah. But Jesus, no bone was broken. Yeah. Which is significant. And, and, and point out scripturally, and I agree with you 100% and I concur, but point out scripturally, if you would, Pastor, mm-hmm. as to why we're confident in, in saying that and also what happened when Christ was hanging from the cross mm. that caused the, the fluid yes. to that, pour forth from his side and the blood. And you know, it's uh, uh, when, when you're hanging on, on the cross, uh, as Jesus was, uh, he had uh, there at uh, the bottom of his feet, he could push up and he had a little seat that he could rest against, just a little one. And, and what happens was when you're hanging and, and you're basically in, in suffocation mode. Right. You know, liquid begins, as, as my son tells me, it begins building up in the lung area in particular. Yeah. And when you're breathing and gasping and breathing, and, and then it will begin to rub and you begin to bleed internally. Yeah. So when that spear came, boom, in the side, didn't break a rib. Right. Amazing. It went right in and punctured that uh, uh, whatever bag or sack that is protected of the lungs and out flowed the blood. We were talking. I like what verse 12 says here, Keith. It tells us, now if Christ is preached, that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? Um, I know that departs from the the teaching of the cross, but uh, my my focal point there is the very fact that uh, uh, we see Jesus. I don't want us to leave him on the cross. You know? I, I, I could not. Amen. I could not agree with you more. And I really like what the Holy Spirit is yeah. doing here with us yeah. because uh, this is unscripted. It, 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 totally unscripted, folks. Yeah. We, we didn't meet at Texas Roadhouse <laughs> and have lunch and talk about what we were going to talk and about. And we didn't drink coffee at Starbucks either. No, sir. No, sir. Because uh, num- number one, <laughs> I don't like coffee. And number two, uh, we... We couldn't get, we didn't have all day to wait at Texas Roadhouse. We didn't, that's And correct. I don't even know if they're open. <laughs> but but you're, you're, exa- you're, exactly, you're exactly right in verse 12. Yeah. But I think it is imperative that we talk about the cross. We have to. No, that, we have to. That not just Christ died, but, but there's a theological warfare being waged today as to why Christ died. Mm -hmm. Some would say that he died as a martyr. Some Mm -hmm. would say he died as a model Mm -hmm. of of how we should lovingly lay down our life. But the Bible says he died for our sins. Substitutionary Mm -hmm. atonement. Would you speak to that for a moment? You know, again, I should have been on that cross. Seriously. Uh, He shouldn't have. He took my place. Uh, and it is that substitutionary sacrifice that Jesus went to the cross for Benny Little John. And, and you know, it took me to age 13 to realize that. And I realized it then, but I, I really, it came into full function in my life when I was 16. Yeah. When I realized what Jesus Christ had done for me. And uh, 
when, when you think about the cross, uh, such a vile, cruel instrument of, of capital punishment. Yeah. Uh, when anyone even in the day of Jesus heard cross, uh, immediately they, they thought of suffering and, uh, and the hurt and the pain, all of that. And I'm thinking Jesus did that for me. Not only w w was he up there on the cross, and, uh, uh, but he had been, uh, his head had been, if you will, hammered with thorns. I don't know of anyone else that died on a cross that I have read that had a, a crown of thorns on his head. Right, right. Think about that. Exactly, ex exactly. And to, to your point, Christ did die on the cross. He did have the, the crown of thorns. And uh, the seven sayings of the cross, and we don't yes. have time to go into those tonight, but just respond to this one. When Christ Jesus, as you so eloquently declared, moments ago for 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 the 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 authorities who who crucified mm -hmm. their goal was to literally see the crucified ones suffocate mm -hmm. and in order to say anything they would have to take those those legs that were bent and 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 place their to even have the air, the mm. oxygen, to say mm. that they'd have to push up. Mm -hmm. And when mm. he cried from the cross, mm -mm. it is finished. Mercy. It is finished. Not, I am finished, but it is finished. Right. What was he talking about? You know, back in that day, every, all the Jews knew that when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, and he took the blood and, and blood and sprinkled it on, on the altar. And he would come out and say to them from behind the veil, the high priest would say, it is finished. Meaning to the Jewish people that uh, they were, that their sins had been forgiven for a year <laughs> yeah. because it was going to come back around the next year. When Jesus said, it is finished, he meant that no longer was there the need of the high priest going into the Holy of Holies. He, there was nothing for him to come out and say that was finished because it was completely, totally done forever. And because of that, the veil of the temple uh, could be rent. And uh, not just the high priest, but anyone could go into the presence of Almighty God. And so Jesus, when he said, it is finished, he wasn't just talking about my life here on this earth right now, or I'm going to die. No, no, no. He was giving, that was yet another sign to all those Jews who understood the temple, the tabernacle, mm. and what it was for the high priest to go in. And he always came out. The high priest always came out. And one of the things the high priest always said was, it is finished or it is completed. Okay. And then Christ, our high priest, gave up the ghost. Yep. He died. Yes. I know in just a moment we're going to go back to another song. Yes. But would you say just a word, this side of the song, and then come back and talk more in depth about his burial. You have been. I have. You have been to, the, to Israel, to the Holy I Land. Have. Lord oh. willing, I'm going in September, and, and I've talked with you about yes. that, and you've kind yes. of... Oh. giving me some prep work, and I'm so excited about that. Oh. But the burial, you've been to that tomb, haven't you, I where have. he was buried? You know, there, they say basically there are three places he could have been buried. Um, I have been, uh, the third place is under a parking lot today, which could very well be, uh, now I'm not taking anything away from the sanctity uh, of, of the tomb, uh, but I went to the tomb that's of the grave, uh, where they have the roll stone, where it's a beautiful garden. And then I've been to, to the grave where the church uh, of the Holy Sepulchre is built. And uh, everybody, listen, wherever it was, I've been to the tomb. And, and I want to tell you something. When, when I went into to the tomb, when I looked into the garden tomb, I wept. I couldn't get in because there's an iron fence there. You can't get in where the body could have been laid. When I was at the temple, uh, at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, I went in to where the body was laid. 
and I wept like a baby. Hmm. I did. Because the only thing I could think is I'm in somebody's tomb and they're not here. It's just as empty as, as the space over on the other side of the, of the uh, theater is here. And, and I'm thinking, they put a man in here. Yeah. And he's gone. Yeah. And, Keith, and, and it just became so overwhelming to me when I went and saw both of those tombs. Regardless of where, where you come down, you say this one or that one. Listen, they're all empty. Praise the Lord. All of them are Praise empty. The Lord. So, yeah. uh, so, so regardless, my point is it becomes an overwhelming factor. As we talked the, at the very beginning, almost somber in some ways to think that I'm, I'm, I'm sitting where Jesus possibly laid for three days when he took my place on the cross. Yeah. And Keith, it just became so it, it is where uh, the tomb is in the, of the Holy Sepulchre, it's gaudy. Um, they built up around it. Um, but still, when you go into that little room there and you see the tomb, and, uh, you know, all I, and I will tell you what I did. I, I was in there and I was rubbing. I, I sat on here and I was rubbing this tomb with my hand like that. I was weeping, just weeping. And just all I could say was, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah. Had, had Christ just died from, from the death blow for our sins mm -hmm. on the cross and then had just instantly come back to life, it, wouldn't, it would not have... It would not have had the impact, I don't think. I, don't agree, I agree, 100%. Because Absolutely. he had to be buried. Absolutely, he had to. He had to be born mm -hmm. in a virgin womb. Yes, yes. But praise God, <laughs> he got to be raised in a virgin tomb. That's right, Nobody. He did. Absolutely. Nobody had nobody ever been there before. Nobody had ever been there. Never thought of it that way. We're going to go back to eternal vision as they sing, I've never trusted you. Gave up hope and found 
Well, praise the Lord. It is absolutely imperative that if we're going to talk about the resurrection of Christ, we've got to come out of the New Testament. Right. And if we're going to come out of the New Testament, Pastor, it is imperative that we link up with the Old Testament. Right. Uh, it's become very, very trendy yes. in uh, church world, USA, that we just unhitch from the Old Testament, mm -hmm. one guy said, and that's his opinion. But it's my conviction that if we unhitch from the Old Testament, we unhitch from that infallible document wherein the New Testament is concealed. Correct. Because the New Testament is that infallible doctrine right. where the Old Testament is revealed. We were talking moments ago, in fact, uh, someone uh, in our viewing audience brought it to our attention that when we were discussing the fact that Christ's legs were not broken, Nothing nor broken. was any mm -hmm. bone broken, mm -hmm. uh, that that's not just our opinion. Right. And I so appreciate our dear, dear friend and sister bringing that to our attention made me look in my Bible yes. and reminded me that when God gave Moses and Aaron the rules of the Passover, some might have sounded unconventional. For example, the clear prohibition against breaking any bones mm -hmm. of the lamb right. that was sacrificed and eaten by each household. Why mm -hmm. did God insist this? Just let me suggest this and then I want okay. you to respond from the New Testament. This command that the Passover lamb not have its legs broken carries symbolic weight. Right. When Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. Preach it. Read it. Whom John the Baptist mm -hmm. proclaimed to be the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus was crucified. And according to the scripture you're about to read, mm -hmm. not one 
of his bones Not was one. broken. That's correct. It says in uh, John's Gospel 19 chapter, therefore, verse 31, because it was the preparation day that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But, but hmm. when they came to Jesus hmm. and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, hmm. and immediately blood and water came out, indicating he had passed away. Yeah. Uh, if, if I could, mm. if I could, uh, now I'm not talking about cutting the cameras off, and I'm not talking about stopping anything, but if I may just very sincerely and, and as transparently as I know how to be, say, I need to just pull myself together because I am totally aware mm -hmm. of my own personal unworthiness yes. to talk about what we're talking about tonight. Yeah. Because as you read that scripture, this brought to my mind yes. what you were reading was, was the Exodus 12, 46 rule mm -hmm. echoed prophetically from Psalm 34, 20, where Scripture says, He protects all His bones. Mm -hmm. Not one of them will be broken. To the last detail of His death, <laughs> Jesus Christ, yes. the Son of the living God, fulfilled the prophecies concerning the Messiah, verifying that He was, as John the Baptist claimed, mm -hmm the sacrificial Lamb when of God. When you read that, for example, and you, you read, you hear the New Testament old put together, it, there's just no way you can, as was said, unhitch. Right. <laughs> you can't. Right. Because, I mean, it, they're all intertwined. It's like thread uh, in the carpet or on the blanket. It's, it's all intertwined. And to se try to separate it will be to t tear apart the blanket. It's not there. And, and if God would care about all the intricate details mm -hmm. of the death of Christ for our sins, does it not give us inexplicable Oof. encouragement that mm -hmm. He cares about all the details of our life? Absolutely. And to know that, that there is nothing, and the Scriptures tell us that nothing gets by Him. He's aware of, of everything. And to know that uh, from beginning to end in, in this blessed book, all scripture was fulfilled. Yeah. Uh, prophecies that were come, that came about even from, from the book of Exodus, um, as you were reading, even from the book of Psalm to the, the synoptics, to the, all the gospels. It, it all came true. It all happened as we were told. And I mean, and... Uh, uh, who would have thought listening to, to Moses speaking as we come to that book of Exodus, who would have ever thought, what's he talking about, an unbroken leg? I mean, you know, yeah. uh, we can put it together today. But uh, it, it becomes overwhelming when you put all of it together. It's right here. That's why it's called the Bible. Okay, Pastor, I'm going to call you to the stand. Oh, my the jury of a lost and a dying and a hopeless world is listening to you mm -hmm. on the witness stand at this moment. Mm -hmm. Sir, based on your research, yes. academically, spiritually, and personally, this Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified on Calvary's cross some 2,000 years ago, died and was buried. Yes. Did he or did he not actually, 
physically and literally rise from the dead? And if so, why? Jesus Christ is risen. That's the glorious, the glorious word of the gospel. He is risen. And there is no one else anywhere in any world religion, anywhere at any time, that could be said of except the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he was crucified, he died, he was buried, and he rose again on that third day. And, and you know, uh, Pastor, it's interesting. People said, well, that happened on Friday. He rose on Sunday. That's two days. No, 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 no. Let's remember how the Jews did their daytime. It began at night. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you do the calculation, Jesus rose on the third day according to uh, the Jewish uh, teachings. So uh, there is, let me tell you something. Just go out there and there is nothing that compare, can compare to the thought that someone loved you so, so much that he would die for you and then the grave couldn't keep him in the ground. Right. He just came on and he said, I am here, here for you. Can I tell you just a, 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 a true here. story Please. that is told? Um, when I was in Waco, Texas, uh, there was this lady, her name was Ruby Harper. And whenever Ruby spoke, whenever she spoke, I mean, I was at Western Heights Baptist Church. It didn't matter how old you were when she spoke a crowd boom just like just like uh, bees on honey and she starts talking about the assassination of president john f kennedy mm. now this was back in 76 77 78 when when i served there and what made it so important was this she was there on, at, on the grassy knoll the day Kennedy was shot. She was an eyewitness. She saw it. She didn't read about it. She saw it. And boy, when she spoke, mm. you listen. Yeah. You see, there are eyewitness people in the Bible who said, I saw it. I saw him on the cross. I saw him take his body. I saw the tomb that was empty. I saw it. They gave great credibility. And you see, I wasn't there to see it. Uh, Brother Keith wasn't. You weren't. But I want you to know, this book is filled with people who were. And this hasn't been edited there's no second edition. It's still first edition. It's 2,000 years old. It doesn't need to be added to, taken away. What's in here is just as true today as when Jesus died on the cross. Nothing has changed. And so I would say to you that when we celebrate the fact that a man died on a cross, he died, he was dead, D-E-A-D, -E say it any way you want, he rose again. Amen, amen. And tonight... If you do not know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, our prayer is that you would repent of your sin and believe on Jesus Christ right. and you will be saved. My Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Word of God says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I so appreciate what my uh, partner in ministry said just moments ago when he said, we don't need to leave Jesus on the cross. Many years ago, I was talking with a man, witnessing to a man, and he talked to me about how that basically his relationship with God was based upon this little cross that he had hanging on the wall. Yeah. And he said, I look at that. I look at that object and, and I talk to that Christ who's hanging on the cross. That, and I'm not belittling that. I'm not making fun of that. No, no. But I want to tell you something, folks. He's not, he's not Jesus on the cross anymore. Mm -hmm. But He's the Lamb of God Amen. who is risen from the Shh. dead. And I challenge you 
I charge you, I encourage you with everything that is within me right now. If you've never prayed to receive Christ, just bow your head wherever you're at. You can do it quietly, reverently, silently, and personally. And just say, God, I know I'm a sinner and I want to be saved right now. Come into my life. Take control of my heart and everything about me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Keith, over here in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, right here in verses 12 and 13, the resurrection of Jesus proves that there will be a resurrection day for us all. Listen. Right. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Yeah. The fact that Jesus rose indicates that we will rise again. Yeah. And uh, you understand the reason that I always say, out of great reverence, don't allow Jesus to remain on the cross. He's not there. Uh, he's, uh, he's in glory, and one day he's, he's going to see you, and you're going to see him face to face. And uh, when you do, the only thing that you and I will ever remember about the cross will be the scars in his hand or his feet. Amen. And uh, I, I'm, I echo what uh, Pastor Keith Kelly said. If you've never prayed that simple prayer, we call it a sinner's prayer. You know, what happens, some people are, they, it's like bells and whistles going off, light, fireworks. Other people, it's very quiet, and they're in a room, or maybe at home, and you just have said, Jesus, come into my heart. I want you to know you're as much saved now as the guy who was saved at a Billy Graham crusade and walked down with 5,000 other people. Amen. It's as simple as that. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go now to eternal vision as they sing, Behold the Lamb. And on that hillside stand three crosses. The center cross holds the precious Son of God. So beaten and bloodied and bruised, he's barely recognizable. Crown of thorns pierces brow, nails pierces hands and feet. As he cries out, it is finished. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. There's a place in the temple called the Holy of Holies where man couldn't go. It's bailed off. But that day that veil was torn from the top to the bottom and thrown aside. We can walk into the very presence of Almighty God because of the work done there that day. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, takes away your sin and mine. So now in this place we can come into his presence and behold the Lamb. In horror, they bowed their heads in disbelief as the mighty King of glory carried his cross to Calvary. They watched the Roman soldiers place those thorns into a crowd and their very being shuddered as they brought their hammer as the cross falls into its socket a mighty angel lifts his sword and ten thousand times ten thousand prepare to move at our Father's word Jehovah God let us go stop there just look what they have done man's not worth the price he's paying, they're not worth your only son. But God 
turns his head in sadness. He will finish our plan. For he loves this world so much. He has provided a living land. We Eternal vision, how we thank them. You know, there is in Scripture, particularly uh, Keith and I have been talking tonight about uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Listen, uh, here are more reasons to believe in the resurrection. Let me just read to you verses uh, 29 through 32 over here in 1 Corinthians uh, 15. Otherwise, what will they do who are baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise at all? When why then are they baptized for the dead? And why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. Mm. If in the manner of men I have fought with beasts of Ephesus, that advantage is it to me? 
If the dead do not rise, let us eat, drink, for tomorrow we will die. Paul was telling these Epicureans there is more than just the merriment of life. Yeah. And that's all they thought. And he wanted them to understand that, that uh, there is so much more to life. There, it is called life after death or even life after life. It is eternal life after life. Yeah. And so we are, you realize, my, my dear friend, that if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, and particularly if you just prayed the prayer as the pastor led us just a, a few moments ago, if you prayed that sinner's prayer, do you realize, now listen, you went from life to eternal life, and that's it. Yeah, because the day of resurrection uh, will come for you as it will for me. And, and, and what that's going to be like, you know, I, I kind of like what Franklin Graham says, uh, uh, Keith, about the Bible. I believe every word in the Bible. Now, I don't understand every word. I'm I, as honest as I can be. Of course. Be. But you will have the promise of resurrection. I mean, to me, that it, it just overwhelms. Again, I, I've used that word a good bit tonight, but when I think about Jesus and the cross and East, well, I am overwhelmed. There's no doubt whatsoever that Christ Jesus did rise from the dead. That That is declared by Scripture. It's documented by history. Yes. And periodically we will hear someone talk about the shroud of Turin mm -hmm. and all of that is good, fine, and well. But my dear friend, the question of the hour tonight yes. is, does Christ live in you? Mercy. Does Christ live in you? Scripture says, uh, and there we go again with the Bible. There we go again with the Bible. Somebody uh, once asked, well, why do we have to bring up the Bible every time we, we talk? Well, listen, friend, we can bring up everything in the world, but until we bring up the Bible, we're really not bringing up anything that is rock solid right. relevant. Right. And I'm so tired mm. of hearing people talk about how the Bible is not relevant anymore. Oh. And we need to retweak the Bible to make it relevant to culture. I want to say mm -hmm. there's not any retweaking that needs to go on, Pastor, yes, but there's some repenting yes, that sir. needs to go on. And that's on the part of culture and not the Christ-centered Scripture. But tonight, if Christ does live in you, mm -hmm. Colossians 1, 27, yes. He is the hope of glory. Yes. Is Christ living His life through us? I think is a question, Galatians 2.20. Yes. For I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Mm -hmm. Yet not I, but Christ who lives, lives in, in me. me. Yes. He lives in me. Yes. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who mm -hmm. loved me and gave himself for me. You've been watching tonight. You've been listening. And uh, Pastor Keith Kelly and I have been talking about... Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection. And maybe you say, well, gracious, I've heard that a hundred times. Wonderful. Now you've heard it a hundred and one. What are you doing about it? What is your life showing us? What's happening? You see, we would see Jesus mm -hmm. as what the world wants. Do they see Jesus in you? I'm not talking about if you wear your hair long or you have a beard or you wear sandals. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Do they see it in your expressions? Do they see it in your demeanor? Mm -hmm. Do they perceive it when mm -hmm. you're speaking? When you talk to children, when you talk to your spouse and you become very aggravated, do they, does he, does she, Perceive Jesus in you. I mean, that's an indictment on me. I mean, not just for the world to see, but my children and my grandkids. Do they see Jesus in you? I mean, my grandkids call me Pop. And I would, I would just about fizzle away if I didn't think they saw the love of Jesus yeah, in me. Yeah, amen. I, and... That's what we want to say to you tonight. Many of you have called us tonight with your prayer concerns and your prayer requests. We want to thank you for that. We're praying for you. Uh, Brother Keith and I will pray collectively 
for all these at the end of our next half hour segment. But we want to thank you. You keep going by. There's that number. Call those prayer counselors. They're standing by. They're waiting for you. Yes, they are. We want to thank you for being part of Nightline. We're going to go to the hard break, as we call it. We'll be gone a couple of minutes, and Keith and I will be right here. And we're waiting and looking for you. I'm Pastor Benny. <laughs> 